The Lord be with you. Please stand as you're able. We are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ to remember his last words and his passion and death on the cross. Let us confess our sin together. Merciful God, your son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we sing. Tonight we are reminded of thy passion, hopefully when it's not, hopefully our last hour draw, is not drawing nigh tonight, but one never knows. But we remind ourselves of the passion this Wednesday, as well as all our Wednesdays on the last words of Christ from the cross. 
Tonight's gospel reading comes from St. Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. A few verses prior to the last word. The soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed Jesus in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown and into his head, they put it on him. And then they began saluting him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed and spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him, sarcastically. They continued mocking him, and they stripped him of the purple cloak, and then they put his own clothes back on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. And it was about nine o'clock in the morning. The inscription of the charge against Jesus read, The King of the Jews... And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down before the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. And then when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 3 o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, lava sabachthani, which means my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The words of Christ from the cross, the first night, Ash Wednesday, we prayed, Father, forgive. We listened to Jesus' words for God to forgive us. The next week from the cross, the reminder of today you shall be with me in paradise, a promise. Last week with Pastor Danielle, woman, behold your son and son, behold your mother, a, a challenge, an invitation to enter into a new relationship because of the cross. And tonight, this honest plea that perhaps we have all prayed, cried, spoken, thought sooner or later, my God, my God, why? Next Wednesday night, no, the sermon's not over, <laughs> but next week, Wednesday night, two words, I thirst, from Pastor Carl Yost sitting back here uh, this evening as well. So return next Wednesday uh, for that message. There's a, there's a piece of paper out there in one of the offering plates, and it said, please pick up a piece of paper and a pencil and a stick pen. I don't know if there are enough stick pens to go around. And the invitation is, perhaps during the sermon or the meditation or following, you may want to write down a prayer concern, maybe something to, that you're considering or someone who needs our help. My God, my God, Why? And then during the prayers of intercession, whatever that prayer concern is, or your question even, my God, my God, why, you're welcome to come up and tack it onto the cross. And Pastor Vernon and I will help tack. You'll need to possibly hold the back of the cross as you push it in, press it in. But also as you do that, you can remember the awfulness of the soldiers pressing a crown of thorns into Jesus' head or pressing those nails into his flesh. So that'll be our invitation during the prayers of intercession tonight. Today is, is March 23rd, uh, 2022. And uh, today, 100 and, what, 12 years ago, uh, my grandfather, Albert H. Keck Jr., was born. Uh, dad's dad and my pawpaw. And apart from being born on this date, uh, he died then 
10 years ago uh, or so in July. He lived to be 102 years old. And in 2001, when Nina and I and our kids moved to Hickory, North Carolina, that's where he and my Meemaw lived. And Paul Paul and Meemaw were there. And on Wednesday nights after Lent or Advent or other church night dinners, we would take them some, some of the Wednesday night food or before the Wednesday night food so they could eat with us even from their home. And then um, periodically we'd take other food and other visits to their home. When my grandmother died in 2004, my grandfather said, gosh, you know, I'm in my 90s, I may not live a whole lot longer, I'm going to go ahead and move out of my home and into the Lutheran home, as it was called then, where I can get some extra care, and I have some friends over there too, people I've ministered to and with, because Paul Paul was a pastor. And so he moved over to the Lutheran home, and for a couple of years, it was pretty wonderful. Nina was working there as a physical therapist, and, and Paul Paul would do his exercises around the place with a gentleman named Oren Klein, and they would exercise and go ride the stationary bikes together, and and I would swing by and take Paul Paul over to Wendy's to pick up a burger and potato and French fries, which he didn't get too often at the Lutheran home. And then during this time of year, ACC basketball tournament and NCAA basketball tournament, I'd go by and we'd watch a little bit of basketball occasionally. His eyes weren't very good, kind of like my dad's and perhaps like mine will be. And he, had a, he would sit up close to the TV and he couldn't see much. And then they had a bigger screen to go in front of that TV set. All this is not just a pastoral prerogative of talking about my grandfather on his birthday. Um, but after a few years at the Lutheran home, he would tell me occasionally about this, about this woman who had been in one of his congregations who had lived a long time, and she was in her 90s once upon a time, and, and she was a widow, and her, her husband had died, and they had no children, and she had outlived her, the rest of her family, and she had outlived all her friends, and Paul Paul would go visit her, as, and she would say, Pastor Keck, I don't know why I'm still around. Has God forgotten me? And Paul Paul would tell that story a few different times, and similar to that. But then Paul Paul would say, and Dave, that's the way I feel. I wonder if, Paul, if God has forgotten me. Living all these years and all of a sudden kind of feeling a bit lonely and a bit lonesome. And his body, at least his eyes, breaking down. Mentally, he was still sharp as ever. He lived to be 102. Paul Paul said that when the lady asked him that question, why was she still around and had God forgotten her? He tried to reassure her, no, God has not forgotten you. God loves you. And my wanting to pry a joke, I would say, and you probably added, Paul Paul, that you assured her that she was going to die one day too, right? <laughs> and he'd laugh a little bit. Thank you. But then he, he would say that story about him. Eventually, he died peacefully in his sleep, just like my grandmother had died. Today, at St. Mark's, we also were remembering a friend of ours on our congregational prayer list, a friend of Dan Markley's and Lake Norman Big Band, Jeff Flagg, died on St. Patrick's Day, age 61. Not only a drummer in the big band, but also an orchestra director and a business systems worker, coordinator, um, did some analysis with that. He died of cancer. And then we're mindful of Wendy Winger, a lady in this congregation, Landon Wendy, and Wendy's mother just died last Sunday, uh, Dorothy McCracken. She was in her 80s when she passed away. Lynn said, God bless her. She was really struggling with various things in life. And so she died peacefully at her home uh, in Pennsylvania. But not everybody dies as peacefully. Dad's brother and my Paul Paul's and my, me Maul's, uh, youngest son, Dr. Timothy Allen Keck, uh, died um, in, uh, well, in April of 1988 of a, a drunk driver going through a stop sign and colliding with my Uncle Tim and injury sustained in that accident didn't allow him to live and he died a few days later in the hospital. After that, my grandmother especially uh, was one of those mothers against drunk driving. She was one of those mad women and mad people, but she was never that mad. She was always just somewhat sad that that had happened, and she wanted to do something to change the world out of love, and so mothers against drunk driving. So I share all that with regards to Jesus on the cross. 
He's not being forgotten, but he does feel abandoned. He does feel lonely. He does feel isolated. And he dies a horrendous death well before he turns 46, like my Uncle Tim did, well before he turned 86, like Dorothy McCracken, Wendy Winger's mother, long before he turned 61, like Jeff Flagg, or 102, like my grandfather. Jesus dies a, a, a god-awful death on the cross. Why? Because he loved people. Because he shared God's love with people. Because some people came and betrayed him with a kiss late one night. Because some people denied him. Because some soldiers arrested him and took him and mocked him and spit on him. And a mock trial had him hanging on a cross at 9 o'clock the next morning. Less than nine hours from an arrest. It was a public hanging a crucifixion to scare the Jews and to scare anyone else to make sure that they behaved for the Roman authorities. It was a public hanging to make sure that other people would not get out of hand, would not proclaim forgiveness of sins to people, because only God can do that, the religious leaders said. For those reasons and more, Jesus was hung on a cross, and I'm mindful that at this time of year and the last couple of years, the Lutheran Church and others, we've been wrestling with, with racial concerns. And I just want to mention that, goodness gracious, it was a lynching. It was a quick hanging. 1914, a man named L. Persons, E-L-L, -L, L. Persons, was take, an African-American man, was taken off a train car in Memphis, Tennessee, where 25 or so white men took him, carried him, bound him uh, publicly, said, hey, we're going to lynch this guy. L. Persons was first burned, and then they extinguished the fire, and then they cut off his ears. And there was a mob of people there, including women and children, with children on their parents' shoulders watching this scene. And then they decided to string him up from a tree. 1950. Five, a 14-year-old boy named Emmett Till. You all are familiar more perhaps with that story. Emmett Till from Chicago was down visiting relatives in the Mississippi Delta when some people came and kidnapped him, took him, punched him, beat him up, shot him, threw him in the, uh, threw him in the river. I can't remember the name of the river at the moment. Threw him in the river where later his body was picked up out and returned back to his mother in Chicago, where his mother said, we're going to have an open casket for the funeral so everybody can see what brutality and a lynching did to my boy. Public pictures raised a whole lot of concern and awareness. That event supposedly led to the Rosa Parks bus sit-in, or it was right there at the Rosa Parks bus, and it led to that 381, more than a year of bus boycott by African Americans. I share all that because in The Cross and the Lynching Tree, a story book by James Cone, he also says that, like the lynching, the cross of Christ gathered a group of people, Jesus' disciples, gathered them back together, gave them not fear but hope, gave them a new opportunity to share God's love as Jesus would have them to share it, gave them a new opportunity to go to people to minister to people when they were crying out, my God, my God, why? My God, my God, why are there crucifixions? My God, my God, why are there lynchings? My God, my God, why? And we can go on from there, from pandemic to a friend suffering with cancer to deaths of people at way too early an age. My God, my God, why? The cross represents the worst inclinations of us, of our humanity. The willingness to execute even innocent victims for the sake of personal and institutional power. Yet the intent of the crucifixion is not what determines its final meaning. And that's why down here on this purple box we have a red heart-shaped <laughs> emblem with the, another black cross on there. A reminder of Martin Luther's seal, a reminder of God's love revealed through the cross of Christ through that awful torture device. And perhaps that's the answer to my God, my God, why? Why? To prove once and for all God's amazing grace and miraculous love and to 
invite us into living into that hope in the midst of all the tragedies and sorrows and hurt of this world, to live into it as Jesus would want us to be, to live into it, so that no one would feel abandoned, so that no one will feel forsaken, so that no one will feel forgotten, so that no one will feel left alone. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Cried out Jesus, perhaps to give us a glimmer of hope. Amen. Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Together as people of faith, we cry out using the Apostles' Creed, a statement of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, why concern that you have?
my God, my God. Jesus reminded us of how personal you are to us, God. How close you are even when we think that you may be far. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ who, who prayed, my God, my God, who prayed, Abba, Father, who prayed, our Father, who reminded us of your amazing grace and love. Receive our prayers that we pierced on the cross, our questions, our concerns, our tragedies, our hopes. Receive them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. We also lift up this night this world that you have created from the creation itself, from oceans and mountains, dirt and soil and trees and the springtime flowers and bloom to nations, especially nations that rage against nations, praying for your peace. We lift up these, these United States of America. We lift up concerns of our state and of our community here in Mooresville in the Lake Norman area. And we lift up concerns to you for St. Mark's Lutheran Church, for um, our uh, congregation council, for our staff, for the prayer concerns that we bear on our hearts and in our minds, for people including Lisa and Wendy and Drew and Janet and Jeff and all others we now name aloud from our lips or silently in our hearts. For Donald and John, We extend our Christian sympathy again to the family of Wendy Winger at the death of her mother and to the family of Jeff Sachs and to all those who mourn and grieve the loss of loved ones. For all those who seek an answer to my God, my God, why? Help us to walk with them and to talk with them and to share at least the love that we know through you and the reminder of how close you are even as we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
I shared with Pastor Dave earlier how much I missed singing this hymn last week, because this hymn, Talis Cannon, was the tune to the lullaby that my mom sang to me when I was little. So, as you go to go to bed this evening, knowing that our Lord Jesus hears your prayers, go in peace, go in grace. Amen.